everyone, this is John Gardner, Professor of Mechanical and Biomedical Engineering at Boise State University, and welcome to Part 2 of Module 6 of ME566, Dynamic Modeling and Control of Engineering Systems. Module 6 deals with simulations, and in Part 2, we're going to talk about actually building a simulation in Simulink. In the previous, mod previous section of this module, we introduced the concept of simulation, what it was and why we do it, and here we'll actually do one in a, in a context that you probably will be familiar. So we're going to start talking about this particular platform for simulations called Simulink, part of MATLAB's um, uh, computational platform. And we're going to do an example on a mass spring damper system, simple linear second order system that everyone's familiar with. And we're going to we're going to talk about how just how to build it and the ins and outs of it and simulate it and, and look at some results. So I encourage you, if you don't already have it, have MATLAB and Simulink installed as you go through this so you can pause this video and follow along and build the simulation yourself. So here's what we know, right? We have a mass on top of a spring and a damper. Uh, the bottom line is this ground, like fixed in space. We define the displacement of the mass X as upward positive, um, and we have no external forces acting on it. So this will be a simulation that responds to initial conditions. The differential equation, hopefully everyone can write in their sleep. Um, this is an expression, the way I've written it here, is Newton's law, right? Uh, mass times acceleration is equal to a summation of forces. Uh, the two forces are the spring and the damper force, and they resist motion, so they have a negative sign associated with them. So we want to solve this for uh, this set of parameters, a tenth of a kilogram, a thousand newton meter uh, spring constant, and one newton second per meter damping constant. We want to do two, two different cases for two different sets of initial conditions as defined here. And um, I'm going to kind of give you an extra quite a question. What kind of responses are these? Is there, there, can you look at what we did in a previous module and say, oh yeah, this is, this is just like blank. Okay, so take a look at that. Okay, so um, very simply, I, I, I took that difference equation and just modified it a little bit and got the highest derivative alone on one side of the equal sign. So kind of almost like the first step towards making a state equation, but in this case it's a second order um, derivative. Um, and this is where you start uh, building a simulation in uh, block diagram form. So I am now going to leave this and go to uh, my MATLAB environment. So I already have MATLAB running. Uh, let me make sure we're not um, losing anything on the screen. Okay, that should be work. I don't think you were losing anything before, but just in case. Um, so this is the typical MATLAB uh, startup. Here's the my current folder, which is uh, where I'm keeping all the files I do for for this class. Here is uh, the typical sign-in. Here's my current workspace. I'm going to clear that out so that we're starting fresh, just like you would. And I'm going to start Simulink by just pressing this button at the top here. And um, pull this over so you can see it. So this is the new Simulink window. It's, it's, the, it's the first time they had it look like this. It used to be um, a much simpler. MATLAB keeps adding stuff to it that gives it more cap capability for the professional engineer, and I think that's great. It makes it a little harder to learn, and so I get a little annoyed at them for this. But under here, uh, basically choose a blank model. So you press that. Uh, I have the two screen issue, so it's going to, uh, it pops over to the other screen. And here's a blank model. Uh, you, you still don't know what to do with it yet because you don't know what blocks to put into it. So press that little icon, and it creates the, it opens up your, uh, your block library. So this is this is the beginning of uh, building a Simulink model. You've got the blank model on the right, the the the, uh, the block library on the left. So let's start with the commonly used blocks and give myself a little bit more room to work here. Uh, I think we can probably build our entire model out of what are commonly used blocks. In the previous section, I talked about how central the concept of the integrator was to building a simulation. So we always start there. And remember we had um, we had a uh, differential equation that defined the second derivative of the displacement. So I basically just dragged an integrator block over here and I'm going to make a copy of it um, by right clicking and dragging 
and now I've got two integrators and it automatically connected the two so um, and I'm gonna build yeah make it a little bigger so this is the beginning and the essence of the simulation you can imagine if we can direct a signal here at, that that represents the acceleration we integrate this we get velocity and we integrate that we get displacement and and here's a um, a convention that I use and most people use in simulation is you label the integrator blocks based on the output of the integration right so I just double clicked on the on the label there and I'm going to type in velocity and I'll double click on this label and type in displacement and uh, trust me even though if you think oh yeah I've got this I've you know I, I'll, I'll remember what it is get in this habit it makes so much more sense so um, let me go back to our differential equation, right? So, so basically I've, I've created a place in Simulink where I expect acceleration to be. So now I have to use the blocks to build this up, right? So I'm pre-multiplying uh, or I'm multiplying this group by a, a constant. In Simulink we call that a gain. And we and we have to then sum these two forces. Okay, so given that, I think I've got a pretty good idea of what to do next on my um, on my simulation. So I want a gain factor here. So I'm going to drag the gain over, put that here. So this will be. I'm going to work on the label first. This will be one over the mass, right? That's what we have to multiply the forces by. Now I need a summing junction. We're, we're doing a summation in front of it because we're summing the forces. Right. So here's summation of forces. Here's mass. So that would be acceleration. It would be on this line. We integrated, get velocity. Out here we get displacement. So what are these two forces? Well, they're k times x and b times x dot. So we can use more gain factors to create you know to, to account for the spring and the damper and again I'll use this trick of right clicking and dragging and I've got another gain block here and I'll put another one down here so these will be lines we connect from the velocity through this gain and then up into the summing junction that's all well and good except these things are pointing in the wrong way you can hook them up and the lines will cross but here's a quick trick here if you right click on any of these blocks it brings up this sub menu one of them is rotate and flip we can flip block and you'll see the shortcut is control high so if I select that it turns it around if I go down here and hit control I it turns it around so nice nice trick there that you don't always find um, in the introduction of Simulink so now I want to take a signal from here and hook it up into here right so this is I'm going to call this the B the damping factor in this K the spring stiffness okay so B has to multiply times the velocity so I have to create a signal goes here and to do that to branch off an existing signal you right click onto the signal which I'm doing here and then drag and it creates a new line and here I just now go back to the usual left clicking and do that I can do the same thing here and we have the essence of a simulation here. A um, couple things to keep in mind. First of all, I've got the signs wrong. Remember, our um, our equation has minus kx minus bx dot, and so um, so I double click on the summing junction, and basically where these two plus signs are, I'll put minus signs. So that's problems done. Um, we don't know what this looks like. We can't see the response yet, right? So remember I talked about, you know, all simulations have an output. <laughs> this simulation doesn't have an output. So I'm going to take the scope block, drag it over here, right click here, and um, and give it a title. That'll show up on the window when it when it actually runs. Um, and now we have to define these these gains, right? They, these default, they all give a value of one. But um, remember, I said the mass is a tenth of a kilogram. The damping factor is one, 
and the spring stiffness is a thousand. And I had two different sets of initial conditions. We'll, we'll solve both of these separately. Uh, here's displacement. I'll start with the other one with a displacement of one and a velocity of zero. Initial condition of velocity is zero. And this is pretty much ready to run. Um, so let's do that basically. Well, you always want to save, right? So save as uh, mod 06 example one. Okay, so if things go bad, you can always go back to it. So if I hit run here, it defaults to run for 10 seconds. That's a kind of annoying little thing. Basically it says it ran and um, there's what it looks like. So it starts with an initial displacement of one and it oscillates down and doesn't quite get all the way to the bottom. Um, I'm going to just make sure I got my parameters right because that seems like a bigger yeah, 0 0.1, 1 in 1,000, right? Yep, okay. That's that's right. Um, if you want to see it run this whole way, we can just change the runtime to 50. And now we see this. Now you look at this, and if you if you if you've seen these before, if you've got a clear eye, it's a you know this doesn't look quite right. It doesn't look like a smooth linear system. For example, this sort of unevenness along this envelope of the oscillation, that shouldn't be there. There's no reason to do that. Um, and if you zoom in on it a little bit, and here's this little zoom uh, tool. You get this this really cuspy, sharp, jagged edge, and that's not happening either so so there's something wrong here um, the reality is it's it's not none of this is computationally incorrect what's wrong is the way we've represented it in other words the integration step is pretty pretty big it's taken pretty big steps and the scope block is just connecting them with straight lines right but the numbers are actually pretty accurate it's pretty close but if we if we want to make it a smoother representation want to make it look better Go back to our, our uh, Simulink model and press this little gear for settings. And um, and here we see this is the these are the runtime parameters. Remember that was one of the things I talked about. We we define the parameters, the mass spring damper. We define an output. We don't have any inputs for the system. This is the runtime control, and this is the default. The default is um, it's a variable step size with an automatic uh, solver selection. So it it, it it, it's pretty knowledgeable about what works and what doesn't, um, but we want to do more. So let's hit the additional options here, and say, okay, it's a variable step size, so it can you know take goes larger and smaller, but you can set how big or small you want it to go. But this is really the thing that really drives it. The error tolerance is one in a thousand. So in other words, it'll it it chooses the variable step size, so its estimate of the error is less than a tenth of one percent. Um, you, for, for, certainly for a first cut, that's fine, but for a lot of stuff, you might want to get more accurate. So I'm going to take it two orders of magnitude smaller. So 10 to the minus fifth, that's the only thing I'll change. I'll hit apply, make it go away, hit this again, and now we see something that looks a lot smoother. If we zoom in on it, we get this beautiful damped sine wave. So, so that works just fine. Um, that's the, the main thing I wanted to show you there. The second simulation, remember that we wanted to look at what it was for a zero initial displacement and an initial velocity. It's always good when you're doing a simulation to make sure you understand <clears throat> what are the physics here? What are you trying to look at? And what I'm looking at here for an initial velocity is the mass is sitting there balanced on the spring and it all of a sudden it instantaneously has an initial velocity. That's, that's actually physically impossible, but we can approximate that with um, an impact, right? If you remember back from your study of dynamics, um, momentum and impact uh, analysis is essentially hitting it with a hammer, right? Tapping it with a hammer. If you hit it really, strike it very um, sh sharply with a hammer, uh, it, it has essentially the effect of an, an instantaneous initial velocity. It, it's not. It, takes place over a finite period of time, but that period of time is so sh short relative to our analysis, it has the same effect. So uh, given that, let's run the simulation um, and we get this, get a different scale on it than we'd seen before because of the way the parameters work out. But if we zoom in on the beginning, we see that it starts with a zero displacement 
it has an if it, that you'll find the slope of this is actually equal to one and then it goes through this oscillation so it, it is back to what we talked about earlier it's essentially an impulse response for our for our system okay so let's um take a look at where we are here so uh in the end this is the model that we ended up with it should look like this uh, velocity displacement our scope and um and that's it so so that's your first simulation in simulate it's a nice linear one we know what the results look like so you can kind of play with it a little bit and i encourage you to do that go in and change the parameter values see what it looks like if you increase the damping it should die out quicker if you um think about in advance if i make the mass bigger or smaller what would i expect to see if i make the spring bigger or smaller what would i expect to be and and test your knowledge and work with it so it's a think of it as an, an experimental apparatus you can work with so um so that's it for this module it's kind of short and sweet on, on part three of module six we're going to kind of do a deeper dive into some of the subtleties of simulink uh, and then in part four we're going to simulate some non-linear systems so that's it uh, enjoy and uh, we'll see you soon mm -hmm.